Okay, this video is called What Causes Insulin Resistance? And basically, somebody recently inquired, you know, what causes insulin resistance beyond just the obvious saturated fat? Uh, so, you know, I'll just put together a couple thoughts here. First of all, I like the idea of healthy living means try to be like Adam and Eve, but keep your indoor heating and plumbing. Um, you know, just eating simple things that grow on the trees, for example, on the plants. Um, you know, and there's the old Genesis 129. Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree which has fruit, it shall be food for you. And this is the best painting, Adam and Eve, by Jan Bruegel and Peter Paul Rubin. Okay. So what causes insulin resistance? Um, basically, there's the concept of overnutrition. Or actually, I'll, just, I'll tell you a quick joke that kind of goes with the idea of this video here. It was this movie, um, it was Robert Duvall was the old guy, uh, the old man in blue with the young guy was Sean Penn, and he told him a joke, like they were two bulls standing up on a hill. And so the, old, so the young bull says to the old bull, why don't we run down there and screw one of those cows? There's a bunch of cows eating grass down in the valley, okay? The bulls are up on a hill, like on the side of a mountain. And then the old bull says, why don't we walk down there and screw all of them? And the joke of it is that, in the process of trying to improve insulin resistance, you can really optimize your health because it's a lot of things that relate to it. The main concept is overnutrition. And saturated fat is the worst of the fats in general for causing this, the most common ones, which means you know avoid animal foods. Animal foods are loaded with saturated fat. There's other things too that are high in saturated fat. I would avoid all of those too. If I was trying to really, really, really minimize insulin resistance, which I do automatically, but this is some of the some type of strategy that I would uh, include. Um, excessive dietary omega-6 fats are bad too because they can activate lipid peroxidation and uh, go through hydroxy non and all. And that's the Tetsumori Yamashima research, etc. And that can damage your beta cells in your pancreas, the ones that make insulin. Excessive dietary sodium. And excessive dietary sodium goes with lack of dietary potassium and magnesium. And once again, that's easy one to solve. Don't eat processed food. Don't add salt to your food. Uh, don't eat preserved food with sodium, like it's a lot of meats, and uh, eat the plants. Plants are loaded with potassium and magnesium. Um, okay, what else? Um, excess dietary iron, because it increases oxidative stress, and that's thought to potentially be related to increase in insulin resistance. Same thing with excessive dietary uh, copper. They both increase oxidative stress. Um, they can lead to redox cycling and generation of free radicals. And oxidative stress just means the oxidants, like iron and copper, are present in large or excessive amounts greater than the amount of antioxidant capacity. Okay, excessive animal protein. It creates an anabolic phase of the body. Um, it elevates blood cholesterol, activates mTOR. That's potentially. Now, these are all minor contributors in comparison with the, the major dietary fat as far as my understanding of it all. Um, what else? Excessive fructose, because it just gets made into fat if you have excessive industrial fructose, you know drinking one of these fructose sweetened beverages, and they'll crank up, they used to call it, you know, 55% fructose and 45% uh, uh, glucose, but a lot of times it's actually 65% fructose. It can be contaminated with mercury. Mercury's uh, a uh, toxin to the mitochondria, so anything toxic to the mitochondria is not gonna help you. You know, the main thing this is doing is, is overwhelming the electron transport chain of the inner mitochondrial membrane. And that causes everything to go backwards, to back up like a traffic jam. That's your uh, standard insulin resistance. Okay, um, other things to be aware of, excessive alcohol, because that causes fatty liver, kind of like excessive industrial processed food fructose. Okay, it's going to lead to elevated blood lipids. Anything that's elevating your blood lipids is going to tend to cause insulin resistance. Um, dairy, especially dairy is associated with type 1 diabetes in a big way. It's thought that autoimmune reaction from autoantibodies damage the pancreas beta cells, causing type 1 diabetes. So when I'm talking about insulin resistance here, it's really in the context of type 2 diabetes. There is such a thing as diabetes 1.5, which is sort of like a combination of type 1 and type 2 features. It ends up being a little bit like type 1. Uh, fluoridated water, uh, F- is a mitochondrial toxin, and so anything in mitochondrial toxin is potentially going to worsen this process. Uh, other mitochondrial toxins can include lead, copper, uh, atrazine, glyphosate, mercury, cadmium, for example. Um, excessive stress elevates cortisol, which elevates your blood sugar, causes insulin resistance. Stress equivalents are caffeine, so I wouldn't drink any caffeine. If I was really concerned about this being sleep deprived, get your sleep, 
corticosteroid medications. Um, we talked about lack of dietary potassium, magnesium, eat your plants for that. Anything that causes obesity. So you got to watch out for those estrogenic chemicals, and there's tons of them in food or in cosmetic products all over the place. Uh, so don't be rubbing anything on yourself. You know, the old joke is Rodney Dangerfield. There's a fine line between rubbing yourself with lotion, uh, rubbing lotion on yourself and rubbing yourself with lotion. Uh, anyways, you got to be a minimalist. I mean, if you want to avoid all these estrogenics, that's the only way to do it because they're in pretty much most personal care products. Um, by being 100% vegan too, you avoid the ones in meat. You got to filter your tap water to get the estrogens out of your tap water. Um, exercise a lot. You know, if I had, uh, if I really wanted to increase my insulin sensitivity, I'd exercise way more because you get the similar effect of um, insulin. You increase the GLUT4 transporters in the skeletal muscle to come up to the plasma membrane to let insulin into the skeletal muscle cell. And normally after you eat a meal postprandial, you should be having about 80% of your postprandial glucose going into that skeletal muscle to be stored as glycogen. Now, this is something I haven't really studied yet, but it just seemed theoretically the idea of circa inhibitors would probably worsen insulin resistance by disrupting calcium metabolism. Circa inhibitors are sarcoplasm, endoplasmic reticulum, calcium, ATPase inhibitors. Um, anything that increases, hemoglobin A1C will go up when you have circa inhibitors a lot of times, so they seem kind of related. And that's pretty much anything that smells bad is probably bad for you, you know, uh, car exhaust, uh, paints, adhesives, etc., um, it's a little bit of a separate topic. This guy right here, Gerald Sheldman, is a genius. He's from Yale, and he did a lot of the pioneering research with nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy on showing that the earliest detectable finding in insulin resistance was accumulation of fat in skeletal muscle cells. He has an online lecture on YouTube that's really good. So if you just type in Gerald Sheldman, you know, diabetes, he won the Banting Award as the best diabetes researcher in the world in 2018. So you can watch his video on YouTube. It's very good. Um, this guy is, I think, related to his wife, too, as a researcher. Because I think that's his wife's last name. Anyways, I'm showing you here this paper. It's a very detailed paper. If you got the time and the level of interest, trust me, it's long and detailed. Uh, but it's sort of like uh, the big summary of what's known about insulin resistance. So, okay, i got a couple more slides. This is just showing electron transport on the inner mitochondrial membrane. So that's typically abbreviated IMM, inner mitochondrial membrane. Outer mitochondrial membrane is typically abbreviated OMM. This is complex one, three, and four. They pump protons out into the space, the intermembranous space. Complex two is involved in uh, transporting electrons, but it doesn't pump a proton. And basically, this has the least grab on the proton. And then as you come down here through complex four, you have oxygen as the ultimate electron acceptor, which has a very high electronegativity, second only to fluoride for grabbing electrons, and that will then be converted to water. It's like a fireman's bucket brigade to pass electrons down. It's like rolling a snowball down a hill to get to complex four. Then the protons pumped into the intramembranous space create a proton gradient, and that can be harvested by allowing the proton to come back in through complex five, which is ATP synthase, and then a phosphate is added to ADP to make ATP, and that's how the vast majority of energy in the human body is made. Um, you'll leak some electrons occasionally. That's normal, small amounts. And the oxygen sitting around in the mitochondrial matrix can be converted to superoxide. Uh, but the body usually can neutralize those quite well with superoxide dismutase. Um, If you've got excess uh, iron sitting around, free iron, which you don't want to have, that can catalyze something called the Fenton reaction, leading to the production of hydroxyl radicals, which can damage the membranes. That's called lipid peroxidation. Free iron is bad. You don't want to be iron overloaded. And then I'm just showing on this slide, all these things that are sort of maroon are all toxic to mitochondria. So mercury is taken out complex one, glyphosate's damages complex two, Cadmium, atrazine, and, and di excess dietary fat, especially SAFAT, damage complex 3. Lead will damage cytochrome C. F minus, excess dietary iron and, and copper will damage complex 4. Hydroxynodinol from lipid peroxidation from too many omega 6 fats in the diet damages ATP synthase. So, all of these things are going to contribute to mitochondrial injury, which could you know, potentially contribute to insulin resistance. So you want to avoid all these things. Like I said, exercise a lot. Don't be sedentary. Um, live simply. 
And um, these are all things that can help increase uh, insulin sensitivity. So hope that's helpful.